Hello everyone. This video is a detailed description of Poet Laureates of Great Britain. All the background details about laureateship and the Poet Laureates till now are being discussed briefly in this video. Let's move on to the topic. Who is a Poet Laureate? From where the idea of laureateship derived? What are the responsibilities of these laureates? Who all are poet laureates? You have so many questions, right? Don't worry, this video tries to give answers to all such questions. So let's start. So who is a poet laureate? Poet laureate is an eminent poet officially appointed by a government or conferring institution typically expected to compose poems for special events and occasions. The name laureate derives from the Latin laureatus meaning crowned with laurel. It is adopted from Roman tradition of honoring a person or poet who has shown excellence in writing by presenting the person with a wreath or crown of laurel leaves, a tree sacred to God Apollo was the patron of poets. The custom of honoring a person or a poet is derived from the ancient myth of Daphne and Apollo was revived in Padua for Albertino Musato, followed by Petrarch's own crowning ceremony. It's a royal degree which recognizes skills in rhetoric, grammar and language. Let's have a quick look at the historical background and responsibilities of a poet laureate. This title was granted in England in the 17th century for poetic excellence. At first, it's free of specific poetic duties, but its holder remains a salaried member of the British royal household. Shortly after 1668, the position became the Poet Laureate of Great Britain in 1707. When the Act of Union created Great Britain's the political name of England, Scotland and Wales. Currently, this is conferred by Poetry Foundation. The major responsibilities of a Poet Laureate in Great Britain is as an official poet, a member of the royal household, instructed to write verses for court and national occasions, awarded the position for life. This honouring began with a pension granted to Ben Johnson by James I in 1660. After Johnson's death in 1637, Sir William Davenant was granted with a similar pension for his services. In 1668, with the appointment of John Dryden, laureateship was recognized as an established royal office to be filled automatically when vacant. At the time of laureate's death, it is the duty of the Prime Minister to nominate successors from which the reigning sovereign will choose. It is the Lord Chamberlain who appoints the Poet Laureate by issuing a warrant to the Laureate elect. The life appointment is always announced in the London Gazette. Ben Johnson was a common law poet laureate. His conversion to Catholicism and reconversion to Anglicanism are all reasons for not formally appointed as Poet Laureate. He became a court poet to King James I. After Ben Johnson's death, dramatist Sir William Davenant became unofficially appointed for laureateship. This table gives you a chronological list of the poet laureates. Have a look at it. In 1668, King Charles II appointed John Dryden as poet laureate and was awarded as Historiographer Royal in 1670. He was the best poet, dramatist, translator and critic of the age. He was fired by William III in 1689 
for failing to take an oath of allegiance, Dryden established heroic couplets as a standard form of English poetry writing. He wrote successful satires, religious pieces, fables, epigrams, compliments, prologues, elegies, epilogues, odes, etc. He also introduced the Alexandrine and triplet into the form. His laureateship spans from 1668 to 1688. Thomas Shadwell was appointed as the next poet laureate. From 1689 to 92, he was the poet laureate. He was an English dramatist who is famous for his comedies of manners. He inaugurated the custom of producing New Year and Birthday Oaths, and this custom continues till 1820. His issues with Dryden was partly political, partly a difference of opinion over dramatic technique. He follows Ben Jonson's style of comedy of humours. He was a weak poet and a heavy drinker and an opium user and even died from an overdose of opium. Unlike Thomas Shadwell, Nahum Tate wrote under the style of Dryden. He was awarded with the title of Poet Laureate and not with Historiographer Royal. He is said to have been a man of intemperate and improvident life. He is best known for his adaptations of Elizabethan playwrights. His version of Shakespeare's King Lear to which he gave a happy ending. That's Cordelia married Edgar. He is one of the famous writers of his time. Nicholas Rowe was the foremost 18th century English tragic dramatist who was the first one to attempt a critical edition of the works of Shakespeare. In addition to annual New Year Ode, the laureate acquired the duty of writing a birthday ode to the monarch, a practice which was to last over 100 years. He was appointed in 1715 Lawrence Euston was a poet laureate from 1718 to 1730. He never published a book of poetry. His work is mediocre. A minor talent, he gained the title through flattery and is better remembered for being satirized by Alexander Pope and others. In 1718, he turned out a hymn celebrating the marriage of Thomas Pelham Holtz. Lord Chamberlain and Duke of Newcastle and his appointment was criticized as a flagrant example of politics trumping merit and from then on his annual odes to the royal family were greeted with derision. Alexander Pope included him as a dunce in the original version of the Dunciad in 1728. He died at 42 reputedly from alcoholism. And in a private letter after his death, Pope referred to him as a drunken sort of person. And he provided a scornful epitaph in the final version of the Dunciad in 1743. At the age of 30, Lawrence, the youngest person to receive the honor, a record he still holds. Collie Sibber who serves the position from 1730 to 1757. He was an English actor, theatre manager, playwright, who was the tactless, rude and supremely self-confident, was the target of many personal and political attacks. He had an open literal fight with Pope. William Whitehead his appointment was first offered to and declined by Thomas Gray. He was a respectable, though dull dramatist, was good-humoured and amiable. He was conscientious and saw himself as a non-partisan spokesman for the whole country. 
He serves the position from 1757 to 85. Next is Thomas Wotton. He was a professor of poetry at Oxford and was the only 18th century laureate who was not primarily a dramatist. Both William Wordsworth and Coleridge admired his work. He has a love for medieval and romantic themes. He is now most highly regarded as a scholar and as a pioneer of literary history. He serves the position from 1785 to 90. Henry James Pye was the next poet laureate from 1790 to 1830. He was made poet laureate as a reward for his faithful support of William Pitt, the younger in the House of Commons. William Pitt, the first prime minister involved in appointing a laureate, offered the position to him, a politician more than a poet. Robert Sade is chiefly remembered for his association with Coleridge and Wordsworth. He secretly married Edith Fricker in 1795, who is the sister of Sarah, whom Coleridge was soon to marry. He wrote poetry, criticism, history, biography, journalism, translations, editions of earlier writers. In 1813, through the influence of Sir Walter Scott, he was appointed as poet laureate. During his tenure, George IV became the monarch in 1820 and abandoned the requirement for regular oaths to monarch. He sought unsuccessfully to end the custom of writing New Year Oaths and Birthday Oaths. It was only finally abolished by Queen Victoria. After Robert Sade, from 1843 to 50, William Wordsworth was appointed as Poet Laureate. William Wordsworth's companionship with Coleridge brings masterpiece to English literature. William Wordsworth at 73 was the oldest poet laureate to be appointed. He accepted the position on the agreement that he would not have obligations to write poetry on demand. He was very much influenced by natural scenery of the English lakes and it reflected in his poetry. Alfred Lord Tennyson raised the statue of the poet laureate highly. His appointment was first offered to and declined by Samuel Rogers. His poetry is remarkable for its metrical variety, rich descriptive imagery and exquisite verbal melodies. His poetry dealt often with the doubts and difficulties of an age in which established Christian faith and traditional assumptions about man's nature and destiny were increasingly called into question by science and modern progress. He may be seen as the first great English poet to be fully aware of the new picture of man's place in the universe revealed by modern science. Tennyson's death was mourned publicly by millions. In respect, no appointment was made to the post of Poet Laureate for four years. Next to Tennyson, Alfred Austin was appointed as a Poet Laureate in 1896 and he served the position till 1913. He was an English poet and journalist and was the least successful of the Poet Laureates. Robert Bridges was the next Poet Laureate and he served the position from 1913 to 30. He is noted for his technical mastery of prosody and for his sponsorship of the poetry of his friend Gerald Manley Hopkins. From 1930 to 1967, John Maysfield was poet laureate. He wrote poems, stories and plays. He served during World War I in the Red Cross 
in France and on a hospital ship at Gallipoli. He was a gifted children's books writer. He received the Order of Merit in 1935. Cecil de Lewis was closely associated with W.H. Auden, Stephen Spenter and Louis Magnus. He was a professor of poetry at Oxford. He was appointed as Poet Laureate in 1968. He was buried near Thomas Hardy in Stinsford Churchyard after his death in 1972. He wrote romantic and melancholy poems. Sir John Betchman wrote humorous and accessible poetry. He was interested in architecture. Famous writers like W.H. Auden, Philip Larkin, etc. acknowledged the subtlety and variety of Betchman's art. He was knighted in 1969 and became poet laureate in 1972. He holds the position until 1984. Edward J. Hughes was popularly known as Ted Hughes. He was married to American poet Sylvia Plath. He was an English poet whose most characteristic verse is without sentimentality, emphasizing the cunning and savagery of animal life in harsh, sometimes distinctive lines. He stopped writing poetry almost completely for nearly three years after Plath's suicide in 1963. He was appointed as Poet Laureate in 1984 on the refusal of poet Philip Larkin. He did write in commemoration of royal events such as the christening of Prince Henry of Wales in 1985. Andrew Motion was the first British poet to serve a fixed term of 10 years, that is from 1999 to 2009, as Poet Laureate of Great Britain. He was a poet, biographer and novelist who was especially noted for his narrative poetry. He frequently wrote about isolation and loss. He got influenced by Edward Thomas and Philip Larkin. He promotes poetry among young people, his poems addressing many public events as well as royal occasions, including the 100th birthday of Queen Elizabeth. He encourages schools to teach poetry regularly. Andrew Motion was knighted in 2009. Carol Ann Duffy, a poet, university professor, playwright and freelance writer whose well-known and well-liked poetry deals with topics such as gender and oppression. She was the first woman and the first Scottish-born poet laureate of Great Britain. In 1999, British media claimed that Duffy had been considered for the position of Poet Laureate, but that Prime Minister Tony Blair feared her homosexuality would not be well received by Middle England. The poet and author Andrew Motion was chosen instead. From 2019 onwards, Simon Armitage was Poet Laureate. He was a poet, playwright, a novelist. His works were widely anthologized and have been broadly popular. He won many awards like Kuhn's Gold Medal for Poetry in 2018. So that's all about Poet Laureates. I hope you got a clear idea. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.